This is Duke University. Global trade and environmental Being justice. Human rights issues today. are still... The term Ubuntu. A the Alien and Sedition accident. He's making inferential discoveries. The importance of an archive. The John Hope Franklin Center. Uh, so this brings me to this scandal. Um, November 27th, 2009, uh, the morning after Thanksgiving, you get these news reports that go viral very quickly on the web. Um, they're also on cable news, on major news networks, that Tiger's been involved with a car crash at 2 a.m. the morning, leaving his house, this strange place, apparently driving out of his house uh, at 2 a.m. on Thanksgiving night when both his uh, mother-in-law and mother had been in the house and also his wife and, and their two kids. Um, there's all of this speculation right away about what had happened and how could he have crashed into a fire hydrant uh, 100 yards from his driveway. Why would somebody be racing out of their house at 2 in the morning on Thanksgiving night uh, and so forth. Um, a week before, the National Enquirer had run a story uh, reporting that um, a, a New York cocktail hostess named... Um, uh, Rachel Uchitel uh, had had an affair with Tiger and was ready to talk about it. And um, it, the, the, the accident and the buzz around it um, set up the conditions where this whole string of other women come forward with stories um, about liaisons of different kinds um, with, with Tiger. Uh, Tiger's PR company, IMG, you know, it first tries to deny the stories about uh, the infidelity stories. Um, uh, but the, the problem for Tiger was that in the tradition of Bill Clinton, Elliot Spitzer, and other powerful men, uh, he'd been very stupid as well as unfaithful, um, either thinking that he'd never get caught because, you know, people had always said yes to him and this kind of dominant figure. Or maybe, and this is one theory if you're a Freudian, that he wanted to be caught, that he was tired of being Tiger Woods, the brand, and all that entailed, which ever since, you know, his young childhood, his dad had been preparing him to be, and that this was a way to uh, destroy a, a version of himself and to reinvent himself. Uh, in any event, Tiger left. Uh, the stories became irrefutable. Uh, he text messaged uh, some of his different lovers, including a porn actress named Jocelyn James. And he left these desperate, pathetic messages that, of course, many of these women um, saved and then used when they came public, often getting money out of it, um, you know, their prerogative. Uh, these desperate messages like, uh, please, Rachel, you have to get your number off of my cell phone. My wife suspects something. Do this for me. It's huge. And you still hear these, these tapes, uh, these embarrassing tapes. Are st you'll still hear them on sports talk radio. Um, and, so this, and the story goes viral, the crash, but then really about um, uh, Tiger's infidelity. Is, um, and it's, every, it's in everywhere from People to New York Times. Uh, you have this whole... Uh, Armada of internet jokes, you know, from the prosaic and you know, sort of now we know that Tiger's not a cheetah to a lot of ones that are just so awful and terrible and sometimes, as I'll note, racist that they don't bear repeating. Um, there are other ones like, which I find sort of funny, I don't know if it's casting aspersions on Scandinavians or not, um, but the joke is uh, what do uh, Tiger Woods and baby seals have in common? The answer was they were both clubbed by, by Scandinavians. Um, the idea being that uh, Ellen ran after Tiger. We know that she helped to drag him from the car when he was unconscious. She had a golf club. Had she just used that to break open the window in the Escalade, or had she used it on a husband that she was angry at? Um, and then some of my, I remember in, the, you know, in 2009 at holiday dinners and the weeks after this had happened, this was a sort of common current Tiger's Troubles were uh, too much talked about on plane rides with strangers and an over holiday dinner and um, so forth. So what to make of um, the scandal? Um, first of all, it's, it's just a, it's a very generic scandal in, in many different ways. Um, scandal loves sex. Sex is a kind of materia prima for, for scandal and, they, and, and here sex was at the, at, at the core of the matter. Um, Scandal is also a zillion-dollar industry in the U.S. today. It's fed, manufactured by the media, 
Um, and it should be said, not just you know, like in the trash media, like Entertainment Tonight and the National Enquirer, but also in the so-called respectable media. So you had you know, reporting on the scandal, often with this sort of would-be ironic distance in the New York Times and the Evening News. Um, and nowadays, too, scandals also amplified many times exponentially on the web. Um, one thing that's been written about in terms of the web and celebrity is that there's new, this sort of new feeling of intimacy between audience and celebrity. In other words, all of us, or many of us, who, especially who go to some of these blogs and follow the life of stars, sort of feel that we really know um, these celebrities. We're on a, you, know, you never would have said Jimmy for Jimmy Stewart. You would have said Jimmy Stewart or Cary Grant. But now it's Brad and Angelina, Brangelina, Oprah. You know, this sort of idea that because we, we know so much, you know, some of it true, some of it false, about these celebrities, that they're almost part of a family, or you know, they're, that, they're, that they're our friends. Um, and so when, when our friend does something bad, uh, some of us get really, really angry. Um, and I could talk more um, if anybody wanted about just the whole question of working, doing research uh, on the web in the first place. So on Hollywood Gossip, for example, a website, somebody with a screen name of Mr. Obvious says that Tiger is, quote, Arrogant, spoiled, bad-tempered, childish, immature, whiny, disloyal, condescending, infantile, repugnant. This kind of personal feeling of betrayal that some people seem to, seem to feel around the scandal. And obviously there's a kind of pleasure in this rage as well. It's, you know, it's, we don't like to rant, but it's also fun and a release. Um, and schadenfreude is clearly you know, very much a part of the alchemy of modern scandal the sort of perverse delight that people seem to take in the, the, the aesthetics or the anti-aesthetics of humiliation. You know, both in scandal we see a famous person, all the better because they're famous, the harder they fall, the kind of pleasure, the schadenfreude that's, that's taken at the downfall of a famous person. But then also on reality TV, too, schadenfreude is this key. You know, we watch reality TV if we do for many different reasons, but part of it is this, you know, the way that people are humiliated, you know, pick up your torch and leave the island. You know, American, the, the, the agony of watching the selection process in American Idol and the way people are, you know, are humiliated on national TV, and it's clearly a part, a perverse part of the, um, of, the, of, of, the, uh, of the aesthetics of these shows. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.